but from your vantage point, what what did you see during the, the scrap that Joel and Carl got into? And I guess what's going through your mind as, as that's all unfolding? I, I was looking down at the other end and watching, you know, how we were, if we were going to score. And then out of the corner of my eye, I saw the incident. And as it's playing out, you know, my immediate reaction is to get in the mix and try the best that you can, a hundred and whatever pounds lighter, and, you know, try to break it up. And I, I always have in my mind the Amari and Boris stepping on the court when Phoenix could have beaten us and gone and won an NBA championship. And, you know, you're just always worried that, you know, injuries can happen, suspensions could occur, but there's a fight, you know, that we have as a team that that at times trumps it all. And uh, somewhere in the middle as the dust unfolds and the league, you know, makes uh, its judgment, um, I can better comment tomorrow. I guess from where you sit today, are you, how worried are you about your well? Up a I, I'm, not, I, I'm not worried, you know, like he, as I see it, I don't see punches being thrown. I don't believe he was the instigator. Um, and so, you know, I have not gone back to review the tape either. So it's uh, just first glance, my, my, my most immediate memory, that's how I remember it. Listen, they, they, they hear me, if you went into our practice facility, we talk about, it's our creed, it, it's a Philly hard, it's Philly edge, and, it, and there's an authenticity, it's real. And, and somewhere, every time we can, we like to point to example, yep, like this is Philly hard, yep, that thing had an edge. This is real, there's a, there's a spirit amongst our team that's authentic. And I think you, you could pick a few buckets to put that incident in, and the team uh, responding as they did. It is Philadelphia, and uh, life moves on. It's part of it. Um, Coach, I asked you before the game about assessing the defense and offense with the big lineups early on. Tonight, you said you created the offense yeah. before the game. You guys come out C minus. C minus, excuse me. Uh, you came out and dropped, I think, 117 points. Uh, how do you feel now? I feel better because I think the, the ball moved, you know, I didn't really purposefully call a bunch of plays until the end. I wanted them to figure it out. The, the, the turnover abundance still is haunting. You're not going to do anything that matters unless you fix that. that that's the bottom line. Now, the, that's the bad news. The good news was our transition defense after the turnovers was exceptional. I mean, I think they had 12 points on you know, 22 turnover, which is is a very tiny relative number for that volume. And so we it starts with, you know, trying to help our two All-Stars, Ben and Joel, with this mission to try to reduce turnovers. You're gonna see that there are many other participants in this ugly category that we need to fix. And if you remove that, I'd give our offense a thumbs up. The smaller, you, quicker. You make about 30, uh, 30 second chance points on 16 offensive See, that, that, to me, there's two areas that is the game. If you look at our points after we turn them over, you know, which I think is, is 29, and then to your point, the, the 30 points on second chance points, when you talk about how do you utilize height, how do you exploit size, you know, it's part of a, the sort of smash mouth bully ball thing we're trying to get better at, and, and that 30 point uh, crashing the boards, and. 29 points, I think it was on, um, you know, taking advantage of how we turned them over. You'd have a hard time going someplace else when you talk about significant stats that helped us win. It seemed Thank like they didn't guys. really, ex weren't able to exploit being smaller and quicker, you know, with your size, perhaps as, as well as they would have hoped to, Brett? In, in, in the third period, uh, there was too, too many layups, you know, too many ISO drives, too easy way too easy and other than that sort of uh, defensive drought I, I think our defense was pretty good you know I always get nervous at the end of with two minutes left in the third period when you feel like the game's going to go this way or the other way it didn't go our way there was a slight momentum change 
and I felt, and we spoke about it going out into the fourth, like there's something got to happen the first few minutes here to, to, to flip the switch because momentum is not going our way. And I think the first three to four minutes of that fourth period, we did that. And from that point on, I think uh, we did a pretty good job of controlling the game. So you're always there. trying to get a, a three-point bomber going. I mean, Furkan was able to get a couple going for him tonight. Do you feel like he was able to kind of begin developing towards that direction? He, he uh, obviously read the newspaper. Um, <laughs> and good for him. It's true. That's what I mean. I want to grow a bomber. And uh, tonight he wasn't bashful. I thought James Ennis came in and, you know, with his offensive rebounding intensity and different things that he did also should be recognized. Um, if you look at our scoring, it was pretty well uh, distributed amongst a lot of people, even the people where you have seven people in double digits and a few with eight and nine. Like, I like the team part of tonight's win. James is kind of sneaky good at the whole offensive rebound. What are the factors that contribute to his success at that? I mean, first, the, the encouragement from our coaching staff that you're that good at it, continue to do it. Most times, you know, when you look at who are go guys or get back guys, it's not smalls. You know, traditionally, four and fives go to the boards, smalls get back. And I think with him, we give him a little bit of freedom uh, to, to dance and, like, make an effort when he thinks it's not going to be punished. Um, and I think he's been rewarded more than we've been hurt. Take one more. What has Matisse Stiebel added to your team this year? I think he just fits into this whole defensive uh, mindset, this defensive uh, identity, uh, a, a trying to be as disruptive as we can defensively. Um, he, he fits in just fine, like really fine. And uh, over time, you know, he'll grow to understand sort of when is it just too risky in, in the moment, but he really does fit into what we're trying to do defensively. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.